Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Welcome, welcome in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord, you guys. Put your hands together, amen. We want to welcome you to Turning Point Fellowship, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and those of you that are watching online, we want to welcome you to our Sunday service, amen. We wish you could be here. We wish you would come out, amen, and feel the love. I want to welcome each and every family that is here today. Thank you guys for coming out, amen. Before we get started in, in our worship, we're gonna, um, I would like to run through a few uh, announcements. So if you just be seated really quick, please. We've got a few things going on here at Turning Point Fellowship, in case you didn't know. It's now you know. It's so beautiful to see new greeters, new ushers. Let's give a hand clap to the greeters and the ushers, you guys. People stepping out in faith, amen, to be a blessing to their brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. It ain't easy at times to step into a new area of your life, amen. Okay, everybody, so this is what we got going on. I want you guys to pay attention, please, because there's a lot of things going on here at Turning Point Fellowship, so there's no reason... We should be uh, bored or saying there's nothing to do because there's a lot to do. There's plenty to do. Amen. June 3rd at 9 a.m., men of a higher standard will be having their monthly men's meeting. Amen. Come on out. Be fed by the word of God. Of course, there will be coffee, pastries, and things like that. But, but more importantly, the word of God is going to be spoken into you. Amen. And in spirit and in truth. And it's up to us to come ready to receive. So June 3rd, 9 a.m., Following the day after that is June's potluck, soul food. Who likes some soul food up in here? You do? Little Christians like I do. Amen. Soul food. For that service, we'll, we will be having potluck fellowship directly following Sunday service. So for those of you on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, make it a point to come out, you guys. You'll get a chance to meet with the congregation after the service as we fellowship and break bread with one another. Amen. Next we have, oh, also, parents, just a reminder, on Potluck Sundays, what we do is we pick up our children in the front of the foyer. Amen. So this way it, uh, it's all done in order. Amen. So we'll pick them up in the, in the foyer on Potluck Sunday. Women of Virtue, where you at? <laughs> Beauty for Ashes. I'm remembering that. Beauty for Ashes. Beauty for ashes, come on. Amen. I'm I ain't letting that go. I received something from you guys going to the mountain. I did, amen. So I'm holding on to that. I received a new woman in Jesus' name. So, women, you got to come on out June 10th, 10 a.m. Invite a friend, you guys. Invite a friend. You might take part in, in the help of changing someone's life, right? Christ is going to do the work. But you're, you're going to bring them. So, so come on and bring a friend. Amen. It's potluck style. You have any questions, you can see Sister Bobby, Sister Margarita, or Sister Sandra. Amen. I'm shaking. I don't know why. June 18th. Fathers. June 18th, we'll be celebrating our fathers. Ninos, tios, grandpas, cuias. We'll be celebrating our fathers. It'll be a special Father's Day service, so come on out June 18th, 10 a.m. For those of you on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, bring your father out. Bring your uncle out. Bring your grandpa out. You'll leave blessed. I guarantee it. Amen? So next, this is a month out, you guys, but we want to get a jump start on this. This is Kids Day. Amen? How many have kids here? Let me hear by, by your hand clap. Kids? There it is. So this was a beautiful vision given to Pastor through his son, Lucas Baruch, and uh, the legacy continues, amen? So what we, would like, what we would like to do, well, let me get this out the way. Saturday, July 15th, you guys, set the date. You guys got more than enough time to set your day apart and bring your kids out to be a part of what's going to take place. It's going to be fun, games, prizes, uh, raffles, bicycle giveaways, there'll be snow cone, machine, popcorn, cotton candy, water slides. Just a lot of fun for the children. And it, all free. You hear that? Free. YouTube and Instagram, it's free. Come on out. And you can, there is no capacity, there is no limit. You can invite people out, you guys. But 
the first 200 children that register will receive backpacks. We will give backpacks from, uh, I think it's K to 5. It'll be elementary, middle, and high school will receive backpacks. If we have left over, we can give some more out. But the goal is to hit 200, you guys. So um, with that being said, with that being said, what we would like is we're going to need some supplies, Turning Point Fellowship. Amen? We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen? We're blessed to be a blessing. So there will be a supplies list in the foyer after um, service. You can get with Sister Regina. Um, there will be a supplies list of what, we, of what we need. And we would like to stuff these backpacks and get these children blessed, ready for school, ready to learn. Amen? Ready to receive an education. Amen? So that's it for the announcements. Let's put your hands together as we stand. Amen? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. So before we go forward, you know, the, the uh, pastor had asked me to, pastor had asked me to um, get up here and uh, open up. So I was like, okay. But as I was sitting, I was praying, and this is what the Lord had given me right then and right there. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25, it's a story about a, the Bible says, what the Bible calls a certain woman. And this certain woman had an issue, and she's had it for years, Right? And it wasn't until the day that she heard the name of Jesus Christ being spoken. It was a man who could heal her. So what did that woman do? When Jesus came through her town, she made it a point to get out and touch. She said, if I can only touch, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I would be healed. So uh, I would encourage you guys this morning to touch the hem of his garment, family. He's here. We are guests in his home. He's here. The anointing is here. We don't have to pray or worship enough to get the anointing is here. The Bible says that she stretched out and touched the hem of his garment. And instantly she was healed and she had that issue no more. So I'd like to encourage you guys. Come out. Touch the hem of his garment. Amen. Amen. Father. We bless you, we honor you, we thank you for this moment, Father, where lives will be changed, yes. minds will be renewed, and you will have your way in our lives. We surrender our hearts and our minds to you, Father. And we thank you for all that you're going to do right now. Right now, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on up, family. Worship your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Woo! Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Shout with victory. Shout with glee. Woo! Shout with joy. We're here to worship a supernatural God. We're here to give him praise. Supernatural, 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 
come alive in the river. We come alive in the river.
His ways are so much better than your ways. His ways are so much better than your ways. When you found your rescue, you put your life together. How amazing His love is. That when everybody counting you out, I ain't done with you. I ain't done with you, mijo. and tell him how amazing he is as you worship come and tell him how amazing he is
to go beyond amazing here. <laughs> but God wants us to go beyond amazing in our thoughts, but they start here in our hearts. We will never be able to think or comprehend the beauty and the might of the living God here. But when we stay here, family, when we stay right here with Him, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven dwells within us. The living God dwells within us. And when we stay here in our heart of hearts, then we will hear from the king. Amen? He's beyond amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the living God. Beyond amazing are you, Father. And we have an opportunity now to give in to that. We have an opportunity to, to tithe. We have an opportunity now to give Amen. in to this, to the amazing God. Just a bit, just a bit of what he's given to us. We have that opportunity to give back now. You can go ahead and go back to your seats, family. Thank you, Father. Praise God. You know what? As you walk back, you can give him glory. It's okay. We're excited. The king is having his way. The king is having his way in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And uh, as this couple here, go ahead and raise up the, the tithing envelopes. If you need uh, uh, a tithing envelope this morning, if you have cash or something that you actually brought, you can go ahead and give that now. But, but first, they're going to bring them to you. 
So here they come with the tithing envelopes. I got a quick scripture for you, family, as they come. It says here in Psalm 54, 6, that I will freely sacrifice to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Come on, somebody. Come on, Raymond. We see you back there. I will freely sacrifice to you. This is what we're doing now in tithes and offering. We're freely sacrificing actually what is already his. Amen? Amen. It's already his. He's given us the unemployment. He's given us the positions. He's given us uh, the strength and, 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 and the know-how and the will and everything to actually work. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're talking about our job. He's given us all of this, family. He's the door, the, the way, the way maker. He's the one that closes doors and opens doors. And he's done this for each and every one of us. And now is the time for us to give back just a small portion of what he's given to us. Amen? For those of you that didn't bring any uh, cash, actually, to give uh, monetarily, we do have... Uh, Text to give, tithes and offerings. We're going to go over that number right now. It's 714-77-7736. One more time, family. 714-477-7736. Pray over your tithe and offering and bring it with an open heart. This is the most important, family. This is a hard situation. Bring it with an open heart. Understand you're just giving back a small portion of what he's done for you. Amen? So let's give this morning. Too good not to be praised. God is too good. 
good not to be praised. God is too good not to be praised. Jesus, hallelujah. 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 Rejoice. Woo. Rejoice. We serve a great God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Just break out, right? We can just continue on. This is a house of praise. That's what happens when you enter the house of praise. Hallelujah. We're going to bless the tithe and offering. Father, I thank you and I bless you, Lord. I thank you first and foremost, Father, that you've trusted us. You've trusted us to give back just a portion a portion of what you so freely give unto us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you, you've trusted us with even some visitors that are here today, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're having your way in each and every one of our lives, Father. And as we lift this offering up to you because it's rightfully yours, we say thank you. We say thank you for what you're doing in our lives personally, what you're doing in the lives of our family, what you're doing in the lives of the brothers and sisters that surround us, what you're doing in the body of Christ here at Turning Point Fellowship. We thank you for what you're doing on a whole across the nation, Father. Even some things that we may not see, Father. Because we understand media is not everything, Father. And we thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Your word says clearly that if we build your house, you will build our entire household, Father. And we come this morning to build your house, my God. I ask that you take this tithes and these offerings and that you give pastor and the board and all those that are selected, Father, by you the knowledge as to how to allocate these funds, Father. Give them the insight. Give them the here and now on how to allocate. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So here we go. We're ready to have service. We're going to go ahead and release our children. Woo! Praise God. Give them praise. Come on, celebrate their lives. Like Pastor says, if we don't celebrate them, somebody will. If we're not paying. Come on back. Come on back. Everybody come back. We cut. Come on back. Come back. You can come back. God allows uh, you to. Come on. You turns. You turns. A U turn. Come on back. Come on back. Children. Tercos. Cabezones. Come on back. <laughs> Where's your children at? Come on back. Thank you, Lord. You guys excited? I'm glad you're excited. Thank you, you're excited. You can still smile. You can still smile. You come back. You'll be back. We'll, we'll release you right now. We'll release you right now. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just allowed someone else to do it, and he, he wasn't prepared either. Uh, we have a, a, a celebration. Stand up, kids. All you guys stand up. I don't know why you guys are uh, sitting down. You guys are younger than us. What are you guys looking for a seat for? You guys, young people should be standing up, man. You guys act like you guys are about 60 or something years old, man. You guys are young people. Amen. You know, unless you're a little older, and okay, then you can go ahead and kick back, but we're young enough to stand up for 30 seconds. Amen. Uh, we have one of our own. We're going to celebrate her birthday. We're going to sing happy birthday to her. Come on, Angel. Her name is Angel. Angel, come on up. Amen. Right here in the middle. They want you right in the middle. How old are you, Miha? 15. 15 years old today. You guys remember 15? Wow, wait. I do remember 15. It's a long time ago, but I remember it. <laughs> Thought I was uh, growing up at 15 years old. Well, at the count of three, we're going to sing Happy Birthday, and I want you guys to sing it like you meet it, all you children. Smile, smile at me. Where, Layla, smile at me. Smile. 
There you go. Amen. Smile at them, and uh, then we're going to sing on the count of three. One, two, three. Turning Point Fellowship, we don't, we don't tolerate people. We celebrate them. So we're going to celebrate her life all, all throughout today. Just if you guys see her, say happy birthday. If you guys have something in your hand, you could give her. It'll be a blessing. You know, a blessing. Five, ten bucks, two dollars, fifty cents, whatever. Bless the child. Amen? Amen. Learn how to sow some seed in there. And Jesus said, now we're going to go ahead and release our children, our youth. Going to go up and hear the word of God. Amen. There goes half of our church. Praise God. If we have a future, don't look at them like, oh, my God. No. We have a future. Amen. And they're being taught the word of God. We're going to go ahead and uh, release our fabulous worship team. Come on. Let's give them a good round of applause. Glory to God. Good to be in the house of God. I'm on this one right here. We have a, a new people that are being trained uh, on the media and the sound, so be patient with us. Be pa you people on YouTube, you people on Facebook, be patient with us. Amen. We have people that are being trained. Uh, we're always looking for help. You know, uh, if you're part of this church and uh, Pastor Angel's your pastor, Get connected. Get connected. You have, you have gifts, you have talents that you could help us out with. There shouldn't be no one here that I can look at that's part of our regular service people should be all connected. My, my heart is that everyone here is standing up doing things, then we leave room for other new people to come in. Amen? So uh, you guys say amen to that? <laughs> So if you have your Bibles, put them in your right hand. We're going to do our profession of faith. You guys should already know that we should carry a Bible. If you're a, if you're a regular person here, a, a member, I would say, here at Turning Point Fellowship, you should have a, you should have a Bible. Amen? Because uh, I know at times you're not going to have your Bible and you're going to have to memorize Scripture, but it's always good to have your Bible. I'm going to surprise you guys one day. I'm going to say we're not going to use these screens, and you're going to have to open up your Bibles and find the books. Imagine that in Jesus' name. They said, do it, do it, do it. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about, I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the, incorruptible, the, indestructible, the indestructible, ever living seed, ever living seed of, the of the Word of God. I'll never be the same. Be the same. I don't want to be the same. Be the same. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, may, you may be seated. You can hit your Bibles like this. This is a Bible thumper. You know, that means you're a Bible thumper, and that's a beautiful thing to be a Bible thumper. As long as we don't thump it along some people's heads or anything like that. In Jesus' name, uh, I want you guys to know, these are my notes, huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> I was looking for these notes. Where were they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, uh, the presence of God. That's what we've been talking about is the presence of God. And... Uh, the presence of, of God himself is power. The, the presence of God is forever, forever, always with us. Even before we were pray, uh, uh, bear, uh, I got born, even before we were born, even before 
our parents knew our name, he was there. Before this uh, universe ever existed, God was there. When you read the Bible, in Genesis, you can read that. First Genesis, you can read in John, you know, that God is here to, to bless us, to encourage us, and to make us new people. And it's from faith to faith and from glory to glory that we grow in the things of God. Amen? And uh, I'm going to share with you guys some, uh, some scriptures here and some revelation that the Lord had, had gave me. Amen? Amen. So uh, I had it upside down the first time I had it right. If you would just go to Psalm 1611 real quick, like, oh, hey, you look, you look doing good, man. That was quick. Hallelujah. These are my scriptures and little notes I have. Amen. Uh, this, is, this is King David speaking to God. Worshiping God. Worship is not just music. Praise is just not music when you sing. There's praise in your heart. There should be some gladness in your heart. There should be some joyness in your heart. Can I get an amen, church? You know that we don't need music. Music is good. It enriches the soul. It really does. Amen? But there's times that you just got to learn how to sing by yourself. You got to learn how to praise God by yourself. You got to learn how to stir yourself up in your own soul. You got to learn how to say, glory be to God. Thank you, Father, for the victory. Thank you for life today. Thank you for joy today. Amen. Thank you that I'm free. Because there's people that are still, uh, uh, you're you're bound up by things, you're you're shadow Handcuffed, I'll use that word. I wanted to use another word. But you're handcuffed by certain things in your mind. It's all a mind thing. Because God already has set you free spiritually. But we got to learn how to renew our minds to transform our lives, you know. Uh, t- today's church is, uh, uh, I was speaking and ministering to men. Uh, was it yesterday, Saturday that I was ministering to men? I had about five men at, at helping us out clean up and things like that. Uh, we, we're cleaning up the the yard and everything. If you guys want to help, just let me know. Uh, bring your your right, your, uh, your your rake, your shovels, your hoes, and things like that. And uh, we could clean this place up real good. It it went away, you know. Uh, it just yeah, it got kind of messy. But on Friday nights we'll be doing that. During the day, I'll be here during the day. If anyone wants to come and help me out during the day uh, you can come by and help me with the rake with raking and sweeping whatever you, you can help me out with watering whatever can be done in Jesus name uh, but God God has set you free if you don't know it yet spiritually you're free you're free to live your life as God intended to you to live uh, he's given you a free will a free will not to sin because we think like that as human beings. We think, we're, we think negative. The first thought for, I say like, sheesh, 99% of believers is negative. Is negative. I'm going to show you something. This is the way people offer you a, a soda. You don't want a soda, do you? You're not hungry, huh? Instead of saying, would you like something to eat? Would you like something to drink? You're offering. You're not telling them that they're not hungry. You're not telling them, you don't want a Coke. We do that as people. Everything's negative. What's the first thing that kids are taught? No. No. We have to learn to teach kids differently. And we ourselves, too. We're... we're, uh, we're a bunch of negative people, and we have to stop all that in Jesus' name. We have to learn to meditate upon the word of God. The word of God will change your heart and transform your life. Pastor's life has been changed by the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. 
you know, uh, by renewing the word. Uh, you guys, uh, I'm going to just use the word. I was a heathen. And everything that goes inside of that word heathen, pastor was. I was. I'm not perfect. I still battle with things. But I know how to overcome. Amen. You got to know how to overcome the emotions. We're, we're human beings and we have emotions in us. But we can't allow our emotions to uh, ruin, uh, ruin our life and run our life. You got to be strong. Uh, my son was a, uh, an outstanding athlete. But when he went to modern day high school, he met people that were just higher or equal to him. And I said, now the difference that's going to separate you from them is a mindset. You can jump as high as them. You can run as high. You can hit as hard, good as them. You can throw as hard as them. But you got to have a mindset. As a Christian, we're all Christians, but we need the mind of Christ. Amen? Without the mind of Christ, we're just taking up room. Some of you right now are thinking about what you're going to eat. What you left, <laughs> you know? See, you're thinking about things you went through last night or last week and stuff like that, where the enemy is trying to captivate you with certain things. Some of you are on your phones. I hope you're on your phones looking at the Bible app and not looking at your friends. If I see you doing this, pastor's not a stupid man, you know? I know what you're doing, you know? What do they call that? Swiping, but there's another thing. Strolling, there you go. Not strolling like in the old times, you used to stroll around, you know, but here now they stroll with the, with the, yeah, with the finger. God has given us his word, his presence. His word is his presence, and his presence is his word. He's given this to us that we would be healthy, we would be better, stronger, wiser, we learn to live in justice. We learn to live in righteousness by the power of God. You don't have to lie no more to kick it. You don't have to lie. If you lie, it's just because you like to lie. Because when you lie, conviction should hit you. All of us lie. Don't, you know, don't sit here and, I don't lie. The Bible says you're a liar then. Because we all do here and there. We'll say some things. And God wants to heal us and deliver us that we wouldn't stumble over our own words, that we wouldn't stumble over sin and our actions and our attitude. Uh, we have to learn to have the word in our hearts that we would not sin against God. Joseph, when he was being in two... Uh, in, Enticed, thank you. When he was being, I closed my eyes for I can focus a little bit. Uh, that he was being enticed by that woman. You know, she was, she was a beautiful woman, the Bible says. And he was a handsome guy. And she was trying to get at him. I'm going to go that way. She was trying to get at him, for you can understand. And what did he say? I'm not going to do this sin because of my God, my father. I will not sin because of God. And that's how we should live. Amen. We should make choices not to sin because we have God living in us. We have the greater one living in us. All power has been given to you over scorpions and over, over serpents and over every trick, over every lie of the enemy. All authority is yours now. There's a lot of you. Come on, amen. I got some two people back there, three of you guys, amen, that are excited for. Amen. All of us have the authority and the power. If someone tells you to eat some stuff you don't like, you, you've said it before, you know. I don't like that food. No, eat it. Here, you're going to eat it. No, no, I don't like that stuff. You know, you're going to eat it. You'll say no, right, until you turn blue. But when sin says, you're going to sin... Go sin here. You're going to sin. Okay. I guess so. No, in Jesus' name, I'm not. I'm making a choice to live right, to live holy before God. I choose God before Satan. I was ministering to a young lady, and I, and I told her, this is how it is, and I want you to see this. We'll give you guys a visual. 
Jesus is standing here and Satan is standing here. Jesus is giving you life and blessings. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you life. Satan wants to kill you and destroy you. And he says, choose. Which one will you serve today? Will you choose life or will you choose death? Will you choose cursings or will you choose blessings? It's up to us. You have the choice now. You have the power. Some of you say, oh, I don't. You're just weak right now, but you can get strong. Amen. As you open up the word, you can get strong. The Lord will strengthen you. The spirit of God will strengthen you. I've been battling since September right now. And I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting wiser. I'm getting stronger in Jesus' name. I'm praying in tongues. I told my daughter just the other day, I said, just pray in tongues. When you don't understand or what you, you don't know what you should be praying for, pray in tongues. And you just begin to pray in Jesus' name. If you have that gift. If you don't have the gift, ask God for it. Ask God for it. You, you receive not because you don't ask. I want it. And some of you would say no, because I've talked to people out here who are cleaning up, and there's like five, six, seven men out there working with me, and I'm ministering to them and talking to them about tongues. They go, I don't want that. I don't want tongues. One of them told me, I think it's the devil's language. I say, I say that's a lie. And this is a Christian, because they're ignorant, you know, and I, ignorant not in a bad way. You guys who are educated know what ignorant means. You're misinformed or you're not informed. That's all the word ignorant means. But ignorant people say, oh, you ignorant. We say, you ignorant. You know, back in the days, I say, you want ignorant, brother, you know. But we're not. We're just, <laughs> you know, we're from the big CPT. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're just misinformed. My people perish. Because of what? Lack of knowledge. The, the Bible says we become naked, destitute before God because of our lack of knowledge. God wants to give us knowledge. And every time we open up the Bible, every time you hear a man or a woman preaching, they're teaching you if you would just open up your heart and open your mind. I may not understand it right now, but all of a sudden, boom. El foco se va a prender. The light bulb is going to go on. Rhema revelation will happen. As you open up the Bible, as you pray, as you begin to hear Christian uh, teaching and, and worship and praise, you're going to hear, you, you're going to hear some, some words and you're like, wow, wait, now I understand. What a trip. I, I read that 15 times. I, brother shared that before and I didn't get it. Now I get it. Because some of us think that we just know too much for our own, for our own sake. I've, I've heard the Bible preached from Genesis to Revelation. I've read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I don't know the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You have to, if you, you guys ask me something I don't know, I have to humble myself and say, Brother, I will get you the answer. I don't have the answer for you. But I will study my word. I'll go there. And I'll bring back with you with the, with the word. You got to be able to do that. Amen. And we're healthy. Then we're healthy. The Bible says where a man is weak, you know, that, he's, that the Lord is strong. He's strong in us. And we can't be so puffed up and so proud of ourselves that, you know, we know this, we know that. Paul says, I, I say that I know nothing but to know Christ and him crucified. That's all we're to know. And we'll grow as we, as we go with him. This is King David speaking to our Heavenly Father. Está hablando ahorita por esta palabra de Dios. Está hablando con usted. Amen. You will show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy. That means there's strength, there's gladness, there's happiness. There's everything that I need in the joy of God. 
The reason we're a lot of, come on, I got one person clapping, amen. The, the reason a lot of us struggle without joy because we're not walking or operating in the joy. You can blame your mama, you can blame your daddy, you can blame your wife, you can blame your son, you can blame your husband, you can blame your friend, you can blame pastor. I used to get all guilty off you guys because you guys would tell me stuff. I get all, you know, oh my God, you know, I'm not a very good pastor, you know. They, no, no, no. You got to be willing to go into this Bible and start highlighting, underlining, putting little notes on it. This is a brand new Bible they gave me about three months ago. So I'm starting to write in it. I'm starting to highlight it. Start, I date things that God tells me when I'm reading. I date it for I can know when it was written. You, you got you to gotta study the word to show yourself approved unto, unto, unto God. Not to me. You're not, you know, don't try to prove yourself to me. Don't try to show off in front of me. It's God. We're showing and we're studying this word, right? To show ourselves approved unto the Lord, right? A man did not be not ashamed of the word. Amen. Rightly dividing this word from the spirit to your soul, from your thoughts to your, to your spirit, man. That's what we're to do. So he says, in your presence is the fullness of joy. In God's presence. At your right hand are the pleasures forever. If we stay in this word of God. If we stay in his presence, you'll always have joy. Amen. There's a hermana that used to come here, but now she, she can't drive because she's a little older now, and it's further where we, move, where we moved away from her, but she watches us on, on uh, live streaming. Someone killed her son. He was a good friend of mine. He was like 15, 16 years old. They shot him. And me and his other brother, well, you want to go get revenge. You want to go do what you got to do. And his mom pulled us to the side and said, nothing's going to be done here. Nothing. She says, I'm going to forgive this young man. Because the devil had took his mind and told him what to do. And, you know, it's easy to hear that. You're like, Shh. yeah, right. You know what she did? When he was incarcerated, he went, she went to go visit him. Picked up the phone, looking through glass. Mijo, you don't know who I am, but I'm going to introduce yourself, myself to you. And she tells him who she is. The young man that you murdered years ago, or weeks ago then, you know, that was my son. I forgive you. I have nothing against you. I pray that God forgives you and you receive the forgiveness of God and you change your life for Jesus Christ. I don't know if you could do that. I don't know if I could do that. Right now, right now I would say, oh, yes, I could do that. <laughs> you get there, you'll find out. If that ever happens, I hope it never does happen to you. She, she exemplified being in God's presence. She prayed. She worshiped. When we went to the hospital, I remember her praying in tongues, just standing there, tears in her eyes and a cloth in her hand, wiping down her tongue. And she had all her, her friends, ladies there, all praying for her and the family. And the young man came out, and he asked for forgiveness too for what he did. And I hope he did receive that and it changed his life. I pray that in Jesus' name. I don't wish. When I pray, I don't wish. I don't say, uh, you know, I wish this, I wish that. That's wishful thinking. That's not faith. Faith is you speak what God says. You speak the word of God. You line yourself up with the word of God. I don't wish you get better. I pray you be well. 
I pray that you be whole in Jesus' name, spirit, soul, and body. I pray that God make you whole in Jesus' name. That's, that's my prayer as a, as a man of God, as a, the leader of this church. That's my prayer for you guys, that you be well. And when, I, when you guys say pray, I just begin to talk. I just say, in Jesus' name, I believe that all things will work out for the good. For those who love the Lord and for those who are called according to his purpose, it's going to work out for your life if you would just believe that. But you got to believe it. We can't just be hearers. We have to be doers. How many times have you heard, make up your bed? Take out the trash. I heard you in your mind. Come on. Don't, don't look around, ladies, you and men. You guys did the same thing, right? And still do it now, you know. Take out the, ba- the trash. I am. Don't worry about it, you know. And there it is, four hours, two hours later, still sitting there. We have to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. Amen. We have to do the word. The, the word of God is alive. It's faith. It's, it's strong. Amen. It's life-changing, the, the Word of God. So I encourage you guys who don't carry Bibles to church or iPad. Uh, I compromise a little bit right there. <laughs> that uh, you would buy a Bible, ask someone that has it, if they have an extra Bible. Because I'm sure a lot of these Christians probably have a lot of extra Bibles. You know, probably have four or five Bibles sitting there, you know. Oh, they got Bibles in the corner right there. Thank you. The red and white ones, right, man? Yeah, the red and white ones. Those are free. If you need a Bible, take it. But take it to read it. Don't take it just to leave it there. Amen? So you make me known to me the path of life. God will. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. King David experienced the joy of the Lord when he was in the presence of God and us, we can enjoy that now in God's presence. We can experience the joys, the pleasures, the goodness of God as we enter in. His presence is here. I come to this building and it's empty. Everything, no one's here. I'm the only one here. And I know God is here. At times I get on my knees. At times I get on my face. At times I just sit somewhere randomly. I just sit here and talk to God. But when I walk in this sanctuary, I know this is God's house. I know this land belongs to God. Amen. Amen. So we need to... We need to talk with him. We need to share our hearts with him. Even though he already knows your heart, even though he knows your thoughts, you still want to speak your thoughts to him. Because sometimes we can give our mind away to people. Let me give you a little piece of my mind. And I say, that's why we have little minds now, because you gave it all away. You got to learn to keep your thoughts to yourself and to God. At times we have to confess our sins and confess our shortcomings in front of people. We do. That's healthy. But you don't want to give it to a gospel, to a gospel, to a gossip. I know people who are gossips in my church. I know. You're not going to ever hear me talk to you about anything personal about my life. You'll never hear me say anything to you. Because I know that you're going to go tell Sister Fulana, Sister Fulana is going to go tell Sister Futana, and Futana is going to go tell Sister, you know, Dorothy, and Dorothy is going to go tell her husband Bill, and Bill's, and all of a sudden, I didn't tell nobody. Six people that know all your business because you told the wrong person. You got to learn how to keep things to yourself. So King David, uh, he experienced 
all the newness of being born again in the spirit and truth. Because in that time, the spirit of God was only given to certain people. He only fell on certain people. But now in the New Testament, in the new covenant that we have, he lives inside of every one of us now. And he speaks to us. Before, he used to speak through man. And that's why in the old religion, we would go to a little booth and confess our sins, right? I know I did. We would confess our sins because that's the man we went to. We don't have to do that no longer. You don't have to come telling me your sins, you know. You talk, him to, talk to God. But if it's a sin that's eating your soul, you need to talk to somebody. You need to talk to pastor, and you need to talk to the elders. I'm not talking about talking to another sister. I'm talking about elders that aren't going to sit here and say, it's okay, don't worry about it. God is grace. No, no. You, we need to know the truth. Every one of us. It hurts to be truthful. Steve, is it, isn't it? It hurts to speak the truth and know the truth and tell people the truth. Someone won't even look at me. You don't look at me because you know I'm talking the truth. Oh, look how bright that light is. Wow. Yeah. You know, we do things like that. All of a sudden you become a a theologian, you know, I'm speaking and all of a sudden, like, oh, sheesh. We're not. We're not to do that. We, we, we have to learn if you're going to be set free and you're going to be good in the presence of God, you're going to be made well, you're going to be made all. We have to speak to God. That's what David was doing. He was speaking to God. He was speaking from his heart. And we have to be Christians like that. You got to learn how to be honest and true. There was a young man this Saturday, and he received the Lord. And he's been coming to our church for a little bit here, you know. And, and God changed his life. But what I, what I appreciated about him was that he was so true, he was raw. I ain't got to lie to you, Pastor. You sure don't. You sure don't have to lie to me. If you think you got to lie to me, you made it. You missed it. You, you're, you're wrong. I'm nobody to lie to. Just a servant of God. I'm a servant Amen. of God. And this is what we have to do. Amen? Amen. Go to uh, John 10, 22 through 30. Been teaching on this already for about a week or two, but I took some breaks, you know, because we let people speak on, uh, on Thursday or we had the women's thing uh, last Sunday. I pray that you've already experienced God at the mountain. I pray that your family experienced him, you ladies, your cousins, your aunts, your cousins, your friends, your moms. Your godmothers, I pray that you did experience God. And you ladies that are from Turning Point Fellowship, from the Women of Virtue, that aren't here because no one paid your way or you paid your way. So I have to go now because I done paid the money. I pray that you would continue to come. I, 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 I do. Come on, amen. Come on, let's. Come on, ladies, we were on fire last week. Amen. I pray that you fight the spirit, not that you're possessed, the spirits of the outside that oppress you and depress you. They work on the outside, on your mind, on your soul, your emotions, your thoughts. I pray that you receive what you said up there and that you're free now to live your life. I, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. That now you're able to come to church because you're free now. Yes. Nothing can hold you back any longer. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm free, to, I'm free to, to bless people, to honor people, to say nice things to people. That's a blessing. Yes. When's the last time you ladies 
have told somebody else that they're beautiful. Sister, you're beautiful. I just want to hug you. Can I get an amen? amen. When's the last time you told a, a man, hey, brother, you're a good-looking dude, man. I say that stuff to men. And I know some of you guys think, no, 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 it ain't like that. I'm not like that. I'm a man. I'm a man of God. And I can tell you, you smell good. You look good. You look sharp. The way you're dressed, you're looking sharp, my brother. We can compliment people. But the devil doesn't want you to compliment one another. He wants you to put each other down and talk about each other's back. We don't. But the Bible talks about a voice that we hear and a, a voice that we follow. As Christians, we should follow. It's going to blow your mind because when you read the word of God, uh, he blows your mind. It's a beautiful thing that he blows up your old mind and gives you a new mind. <laughs> mind blowing. I know I'm using those words. You're going to like, oh, man, pastor, for the talking ghetto and everything. I'm just trying to, I make it very simple. People always tell me that. You make it very simple. It is. The gospel is very simple. We try to make it real deep for we can make ourselves sound better. I know some of you guys are educated and that's the way you speak. That's your natural thing. That's great. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. You know, they, they talked above the people's heads for they can be, show themselves like, check me out, I'm the holy one. No, Jesus came like a regular person like us. God in a body of a man named Jesus and he began to minister to all of us. And he began to speak the truth. That he would set you free. Free from your past, free from your religion, free from your own way of thinking, your own pride, your ego. Your e ego. Ladies, I'm speaking to you too because you guys think that when I say pride, I'm speaking to a male. I'm speaking to the church, male and female. When the Bible says man, he's speaking to men generally. A man and a woman. And he wants us to grow. And he says, now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem as it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch, right before you go in. And the Jews surrendered him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? Check out what they say. If you are Christ, tell us plainly. Tell us the truth if you're God. Tell us if you're the anointed one. Tell us if you're the son of God. Tell us this. Why you make it all dark and so hard? He wasn't. He, he, if you read your word, he tells you how many times he's, he's God in the flesh. I'm the son of God. I'm the son of man. He's telling you who he is. But we're not listening. We're listening with these ears, but we're not listening with the inner ear. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. There's going to be a lot of people that don't, deliver, uh, don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The, the, the signs, the wonders, it's because who I am. My father and I are one. But you did not believe because you are not of my sheep. Because you're in this church doesn't mean that you belong to Jesus. I pray if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray that you would receive Jesus Ask God to forgive you for your sins, repent of them, and begin to walk with Jesus Christ. That when you hear his voice, you're not going to be disobedient. You're going to be obedient. Amen. A lot of us come to church when we want to come to church. You choose when you want to come to church. You choose when you don't want to come. 
And we'll, we'll make all kinds of, I'm going to use this word. You guys may get upset with me. I mean, I see you again for a long time. I preached to five people before in my life, and I preached to hundreds of people in my life. That oh, excuses. Thank you. Very good. There's excuses and there's reasons why we don't come to church. Excuses. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of clouds out there. It looks like rain. I don't have an umbrella, so I don't think I'm going to make it to church after all. That's an excuse. A reason. My car broke down on the way over here. I got two flat tires, man, and I only have one spare. By the time they come, church is going to be done. So you're not making excuses. You're, you have reasons why not to be there. My child is ill. So you got to stay home. That doesn't mean both of you have to stay home because that's the way I think. You know, both of you got to stay home because the kid has a, Two stitches on his finger, you know. One can go to church and one can stay. You can. That's how pastor thinks. You guys are going to get to know how I think. <laughs> if you get close to me, you'll know exactly how I think. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. And I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. They hear the voice of God. They recognize the voice of God. They know the voice of God. Just like if you heard your child crying in a room with 20 other kids, but your kid is the one crying, you'll recognize that voice like that. Your grandchildren, right? I run that when you recognize your little baby girls, your little girl daughters, right? I know I would. Gabriel was crying, huh? That's my boy. You elbow Tomas, get out the way, man. You're too slow. I got to go. I got to go get my kid, right? She didn't give an amen, but it's, it's an amen. Anyway. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice, and I know them and follow, uh, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them from their hands. Stay right here. He says he gives them life, eternal life. And if we truly belong to God, if we truly gave our hearts to God, if we are truly a, uh, born again Christians, no one can snatch you out of God's hands. No one. You know what happened? We walk away from God. If you read the book of Hebrews, he talks about apostates. An apostate is a person who denies Christ now. I never said he wasn't Lord, but the way you live, the way you act, your characteristics show that you've denied the power and the grace and the love of God in your life because of the way you live. That's why when people are sold out for God and they're Christians, the compromisers, they'll find each other. They'll find their little group right here. The people who are talking about Jesus and you know they're Christians. Yeah, they're just a little different from us, bro. But I believe in God. Do you? Why can't we have fellowship if we're Christians? Why can't we break, bake bread together? Why can't you invite me to your house? Are we brothers? Are you Christians? I like pizza too, my brother. I like the bird. I love chicken. You want to invite Pastor? Invite some, get some chicken there. Pastor will be the first one there. <laughs> so he says, I give them eternal life. They shall not perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. It can't be done. They don't have the power. They don't have the authority to do that. It only happens when you give it to the enemy. The devil can't take nothing from you. He can't tell you what to do. He's going to suggest things. He's going to suggest to you. But he can't have you. You're a child of God. Can I get an amen? Next one. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Here it is. 
I and my Father are one. We're the same. Amen? Jesus is God in the flesh, and God is inside of Jesus. They operate as one. One is not greater than the other. Right here he is because he's, he's operating as a man on earth. So he's allowing God to go ahead and speak over him and above him. But when they come together in, in heaven, they're one. When he says, I finished my assignment, it is done. It's finished. I get to go home. Some writers said that the reason he, he called out to, to Jesus Christ, how, how does I say, Tabatea, how, do how did he cry out to God when he was on the cross? The word, the name? Oh, okay, never mind. But he, he cried out to God in, in the Hebrew word. He's calling out to God. And he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forgotten about me? I'm your son. I'm the one that was willing to go all the way through. What are you doing? He didn't understand because he was operating as a man. He understood God's plan. But he was tripping because he was flesh. He was human. Why have you forsaken me? This was going to be the first time that Jesus is separated from the Father for that moment that the sacrifice, the atonement had to be made for the sins of the world. Have you guys ever been separated from someone you love? I mean, dearly. The first time when Abel went to the Air Force, he was 18 years old, right? He was 18, and we were always together. There was nine of us, nine kids, nine kids. We did everything together. Me and my brother took baths together. My other two, they took a bath together. Those other two took baths together. We were always together like this. We ate. We ate together. We didn't, we didn't go eat in the, in, the, in the room. You didn't have no little tables in front of you. That was not allowed in my father's house. You eat at the table, and you talk, and you get along, and you, and you eat. That's how, it was, that's how we were taught, and that's how we were raised for all these years. And all of a sudden, they tell us, Abel's going to leave. And we're like, Abel's going. Where's Abel going? He's going to go to the Air Force. He's going to leave us. Hey, you know, you're a little kid. At that time, I'm eight years old, seven, eight years old or about nine years old at that time, 19 years old, I'm a little kid. And I'm like, good, good, he's leaving. He's mean anyway, you know. As, as a little kid, you say stup stupid stuff like that. You don't know no better. Then we go to LAX. And we're all saying goodbye. And we're still having fun. We're all laughing. Ah, yeah, he's going to be leaving. You know, we're thinking he's coming right back. He's leaving for like three. Back then it was, I think, 90, uh, 90 days uh, uh, boot camp. Yeah, 90 days, three months. We've never been that apart. We've never, a weekend, seven days, when our Theo would invite us to Yosemite and stuff like that. You go shooting with your cousins that are older. They would take you shooting for the weekend. That was the furthest you've been. I was a homeboy, not gang or gangster homeboy. I was a homeboy when who stood home. When they let, they let me go to my Theo's house over the weekend, or my aunt's house for the weekend, <laughs> Friday night, Saturday morning, I tell my Theo Juan, I want to go home. <laughs> and you know Theo Juan, hijo de la ch you ain't going nowhere. You're staying here till Sunday. When I go home, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you can go home, and you're like, oh, my God. You know, and you're thinking in your mind, I miss my brothers. I miss all my friends. Right now, they're playing football. They're playing high, hide, and sweet, uh, hide and go seek. They're playing on, the, on the, uh, uh, the trees and all that stuff, the tree houses. You're thinking all that stuff. Never been that distance away from my brother, separated from my brothers and sisters. When we see him leave, and he has his bag, and he starts walking toward the airplane, toward the airplane we start crying. 
like someone took our candy. We're grabbing at the windows. I remember like it was yesterday. No, Papa, no, don't let them. No, no, let Papa, no, no. We're crying. We're, when the plane starts going to the, uh, to the thing, we're running along the windows. I don't care who was there. We didn't care the people were there. Move out the way, move out the way. We're moving them all out the way, running for our older brother, the oldest one, crying like, oh, my God, like if he had died. On the way home, we're all crying and crying. My, my dad, there was a, a, a machismo man, you know, was crying because of his sons that were crying and his daughters that were crying. My mom crying and crying. We're crying for my brother. We're at home. We're crying. We go to the room, and he has his own little bed. He's like the little junior king and stuff like that. We're not saying who gets the bed. We're crying. That couldn't even compare to what Jesus and God went through. They, they, they say that because of the sin that was upon him, not the sin that he made, because Jesus Christ never sinned, but the sins of the world, the hurt, the pain, the sorrow, everything that was upon us should have that was for us, were given to him. And he hung on the cross and he said those two words. What was the word? There it is. Right there. Amen. I used to be able to say that word. <laughs> I'll read it again. But he cried that out. Then he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? He had never been separated from his father. Before the earth was, if you read the Bible in 1 Genesis and 1 John, the Bible was with God when it all began. And he spoke the word out and the word had action and the word made everything that you can see. Everything that wasn't seen is made now by the word of God. And that's why now we have the authority and the power as Christians to speak forth the word of God. Not in your own power, not in your own uh, knowledge, but all through God and by God. God should always get the glory for what we say, what we do when it, when it pleases the Father. We should always glorify God. I want you to write those notes down. He says, I and my father are one. When you see my father, you see me. Jesus is the example of the invisible God. If you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, if you read the Gospels, you'll know exactly who Jesus is. You'll know exactly how he operates, what he says, what he does, how he lived, and how he, uh, how he had other people live, how he blessed you, how he even rebuked you. You think that God is not going to rebuke us or, or commit, uh, correct us? He does. He is going to correct you. He is going to rebuke you. But the only difference between him and us, he does it in pure love. There's no malice in his heart. He does it to build you up and encourage you. A lot of it is like your cousin, your, your grandson, right? You love your grandchildren. You won't whip them, but you'll, you'll uh, tell them, you'll threaten them, right? One, two, you better get it done. Two and a half, two and three quarters. <laughs> God, God will correct us right when we need it. The perfect timing and how. Don't, bl don't, don't blame God. Don't get upset with God. He does it because he loves you. And he wants to teach you 
how to live, how to be a Christian, how to be a person that's honest, a person who speaks the truth, a person who knows how to love and give love back. I didn't know how to love the way God loved. I didn't love people the way they loved. God taught me, and he teaches me now. That's why I hug people. That's why I kiss people. That's why I shake people's hand. Because that's God's love going through me. Today with Tomas, I said, Tomas, come in about 15 minutes before, 20 minutes, because I got to go hug the people. That's my heart, to hug the people, to bless the people. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2.14. Can you go to 13 for me, 13, 14? 13, 14, and 15, if you don't mind. I want you guys to hear this. Then we're going to be done here. I know you guys say, man, this guy goes long. Okay. <laughs> I'll watch a basketball game, a football game for three, four hours. He'll be at the park for, what, two, four hours? Right? Right? I've coached, I've played the game, and you start at 8 o'clock in the morning, remember, when we used to coach, and you're not home till 8 o'clock at night for us. Sometimes we didn't even come home. <laughs> Paul writes this to the Corinthian church. It's learning what it is to be a Christian. He says, these things we also speak, not in words with man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. God doesn't speak to your mind. He doesn't speak to your, to your body first. He speaks to your spirit. God is spirit to spirit. He speaks to your spirit man. Your spirit man speaks to your mind. And your mind speaks to your body. He works in a triune way. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So when you hear something, you think it's in your mind. That's how fast the spirit of God moves. Boom, boom, boom. He's moving from your spirit to your mind, your mind to your heart. That you would speak it and live it out. These things we also speak, not words that man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. But the natural man, the man that doesn't know Jesus Christ, a man who isn't Taught, a man who isn't read or a man who isn't instructed in the word of God is a natural man. A man who has never received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. I don't care how long you've been in this church. Can I get an amen? You could be in this church and you could be a natural person. I go to church every Sunday and you're still the same. I go to church Sunday and Thursday. And guess what? I take communion too. And you're still a natural man. When I say man, you guys know what I mean. Man and, one more time, man and, that's what the word means. But the natural man does not receive the things uh, of the, uh, the spirit of God, does not. For they are foolish to him. No, or now can he, nor can he know. Because they are spiritually discerned. He's trying to understand God with his mind. Can't be done. It will not be done. I don't care what you guys tell me. It cannot be done. The only reason you're saved, the only reason you're sitting here is because the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of the living God. That's the only reason you're here. The only reason you receive Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. Through other people. 
I'm like, oh, man, they're going to talk to me about Jesus. You better praise God that they talk to you about God. I do now. Because I used to say the same thing when my dad was, he was a preacher. I don't want to hear this old man. And what's, quiero hablar contigo, oh, my God. He wants to talk to me. You know, and he would, he would minister to you, he would tell me. The last prophecy he gave me, September 5th, 1994, we're barbecuing, drinking. My father's a preacher. He calls us all up to tell us happy birthday. Even at 91 right now, he'll call everyone, whoever's birthday it is, he calls you up, and he prays with you. He didn't pray with me. You know what he told me? He says, I got a word from God for you, angel. Shoot it, pops. Go ahead. In Spanish, we're having a conversation. He says, uh, if you don't change your ways, you're going to hell. God is speaking to you, and he's been speaking to you for a long time already. And if you don't change the way you think and the way you speak and the way you live, angel, te vas a ir al infierno. I'm like, oh, happy birthday to me too. Thank you. <laughs> Those were my words. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. And my sister Maria is right there like, what's going on? I'm like, Dad, you know Pops, man? Always throwing water on the fire, man. You know? But he was telling me the truth. Three days, three, days, three weeks later, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and changed my whole life because of the words he gave me. I took heed to the word. And it changed me. I haven't got high, haven't drank, haven't fooled around with a woman that's not my wife. And, oh, 29 years? It'll be 29 years. But God has kept me here before him. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not. But God has kept me. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You have to be born again in order to receive what's being said. People walk away here in, in the church. Even, like I said, the natural Christians. They, they call themselves Christians, but they don't want to hear this. That's why a lot of Christians don't come to church. I'm waving to the people and... Facebook and YouTube, because they'll have any excuse they can not to come to the body of Christ. He says, we're not to forsake the gathering of the brothers, of people who believe. We're not to forsake that. We're to be here. And I know it's a sharp word. For some of you guys, it's a sharp word. For some of you guys, you're like, ooh, I needed to hear this. This is a good word. I needed this. You know, amen. all five of you, praise God, you know. But he who, is, uh, he who is spiritual judges all things. Us. You begin to judge and begin to know. Not judge to condemn. That's right. Come on, but to judge because the conviction of God is upon you. How you live. How you speak. And how you see things. Because sometimes we want to. Sometimes we want to compromise with our children. Because they're in sin. It's all right. They live a certain lifestyle. And I'm not talking about the gay style. That, 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 that's happening. But gangsters, drug addicts, loose women, our, our children, our, our daughters and our sons are living loose, word, loose ways. And, and we compromise as Christians. We don't tell them nothing. Because in your heart, you've already compromised the word of God. You're afraid to tell them things. You're afraid to correct them. They're not going to like me. Bye, Felicia, if you're moving out. Come on, I'm being. My, my father told me at 18 years old, you got to go. I'm giving you six months for free. Después de eso, te me largas. That means get the heck out of my house. He's not saying, will you please leave? Nope, te largas. That's a mean word, huh? You got to go. I think he probably told you the same thing, right? Because <laughs> you wanted to leave early and you wanted to think you were a man. Largate. You've heard that, right? Huh? <laughs> Get out. If you don't like it. 
But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet in himself he is rightly judged by no one. Why? Because we, might, because we examine ourselves. All right? When we're wrong, we can say we're wrong. I missed it. I blew it. You can judge yourself. You don't need somebody else to judge you. That's why, oh, you can't judge me because you haven't judged yourself. Because if you judge yourself and check yourself out, you know what you'll say? You're absolutely right, sister. What you just said right now was true to me. Thank you for that. I needed that. Because we compromise our lives. Or we want to defend our sin. We want to defend our compromising. Can I get an amen, church? Come on. Put your hand up. Go like this. Little Pentecostal wave right there. Hallelujah. Amen. We do that, all of us. And I've learned in my life that I can't do that. I had a friend, a, friend, a son that was a knucklehead, and I had to tell him the truth. Just like I was a knucklehead, and my father had to tell me the truth. It's hard. I have a bunch of children here, and I have to tell you guys the truth. And I know some of you guys at times don't like pastor. You know why? Because I, I can tell. You think I'm foolish or stupid? All of a sudden, you used to hug me. All of a sudden, you used to come up and hug me. All of a sudden, you used to come up and shake my hand, pastor. But when you're mad at me, like, Phew. get the kids. Come on. Let's go. We're leaving. <laughs> right? Amen? Can I get an amen? Can't even fellowship. See, pastor up there. And I do that with you guys, playing around with you guys, you know. Like when you guys are walking by me and I don't want to see you, like, you don't see me and I don't see you either. John Cena, Cena, right, the wrestler. Can't see me. But God judges righteously. He judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. When we're honest with each other, when you look at the man in the mirror, when you look at the word and it begins to judge you, it begins to tell you what's right, what's wrong, where you need some work at. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you love me so much you're willing to correct me. And he does it as a gentleman out on the side. And if you take heed, you're going to get better. You're going to get well. Because you took heed to the word of God. You're not just going to be a hearer of the word, but you're going to be a doer of the word. And when you begin to do the word, you're going to begin to walk. You're going to have a little confidence. You're not going to be like this. You're going to walk upright before God and bless God and honor God. If you only knew my story, now that you that are getting well and getting better, because the, the Lord and his word corrected you. Right? It's a beautiful thing. It hurts while we're going through it. We look for every excuse to, not to come to church. We want to run out from church. Can I get an amen? amen. The, the baby went poop twice today, so we won't be going to church today after all. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> we continue to fight the good fight of faith. La vida es dura. La vida es dura. But those who endure to the end will be saved. Those who last to the end will be saved. And that's what we have to do. We have to learn how to last. We've got to learn how to go through. You know, uh, that's why I say I, I, can't even, I can't even talk to the men the way I want to talk to them. Because that would hurt their feelings. And my wife used to tell me that. If you talk to... To the men, the way you talk to me, you wouldn't have a bunch of sissies in your church. I'm like, oh, my God. She says, you baby them guys. But me, you talk to me straightforward. To my son, you talk straightforward. But these guys, you're showing all kinds of grace. And God dealt with me all that. Because you think you're just talking straight, and sometimes you're talking out of turn. So I've learned. I'm not rough no more at all. Amen. I'm 
<laughs> if you guys don't, <laughs> you guys are newer, so I have a lot of grace. Amen. Right, Sandra, when we first started, huh, Bert, it was, it was rough. I used to fire. Poof, poof. Little for you. Poof, 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 poof. Double here. Boom, boom. <laughs> But God began to teach me grace and love, to choose my words. The last instruction I got from God was about four months ago. He says, you'll no longer speak the way you speak, and you backed it up with a, a word you gave me. He says, angel, the words you'll speak now, they'll be with purpose, and they'll be on purpose. You're not going to use your words anymore. And you're not going to allow people to use your anointing. Because Saturday, right before church, 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock, I'd be on the phone for a half hour, 45 minutes with two different men, ministering to them my notes. And then she would, I'd go to bed, and she'd like, you just gave them everything, huh? You just gave them all your anointing, you gave them all your wisdom, everything you studied for between you and God for the people. Now you just gave it to two brothers. They won't be at church tomorrow. And I look, and... Things happened. I had to do something. She said, because you already fed them. So they don't have to get seconds. So I've learned, and you guys already know, most of the men here, don't call me at nighttime unless it's an emergency. We, ha we have to learn how to be judged right here, spiritual judges of all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. If we live pure before God, we live right before God, no matter what this young man says, no matter what you know what? My heart is pure. I love you, son, and you can say whatever you want to say, but my heart is pure before God. You can't judge me. You can't tell him that because he'll want to, want to fight, you know, but in your mind. Couples, you can't judge me. You can't preach at me. I am a preacher. No. You know the truth now, Daniel. You're learning the truth. And as we learn the truth, we learn to live free. You're free. You're free to go and sin no more. That's what God said, right? Go and sin no more. So it's up to us now to go and sin no more. You think he just said that to say that? No, he gave instruction. And that's what he says to us. Now you're free. Go and sin no more. You're free. Go and sin no more. Let's praise God. Let's give God a praise offer. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Amen. So there's choices. And our choices will have some sanqu uh, san san yep. that word right there. <laughs> I love the Lord and I love you guys. I'm preaching at the church, not one individual. If you got it, beautiful. My pastor just tell me, the dog that yelps the loudest is the dog that got hit with the rock. <laughs> That's what he would tell me. He says, so if they're yapping at you, because they got hit with the word. We're free. I want you guys to know that. Amen. <laughs> but to honor God and bless the Lord with our lives. Father, we love you. And we do, Father. We love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, and all our souls, Father, with all our might, with all our strength. With everything that's within us, Lord God, to worship you, to praise you, Father, we give it to you. We surrender our sin, bitterness, Father, our angry, our hurt, our pain. In Jesus' name, Father, we release that right now. And we pray and we believe 
that all things are possible for him who believes. We are believers, Lord, of Jesus Christ. So we know that all things are possible for us who believe. Use us, Lord, as we examine the, the scriptures, Lord, as we read again. Use our minds, use our emotions, use our character, use our who we are, Lord God, our spirits, to speak to us, Lord. For we want to know the truth, and we know that the truth will set us free. And indeed, we will be free. Indeed means in action you will be free. In your lifestyle, you will be free. And in truth, you will be free. So, Father, we love you. We bless you for the good work you've begun in us, Lord. We're confident of this very thing. That what you've begun, you're going to complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. We're not going to give up. We're not going to give in, Father. We're going to keep our faith and we're going to win. We're going to win this fight, Lord. We're not going in, we lost, Father. We, we're going in, we won. It's already been won. If you read the Bible, it's already won. Read Revelations, the story is over. It's won. We just got to learn how to win and continue to go. So, Father, we thank you for our children that are next door, the teachers, Father, the youth, every minister here, Lord God, in media and sound, those that are being trained, every usher, every armor bearer, Lord God, every minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you would keep them. I pray that their faith will not fail them, Lord. But they'll grow. They'll grow, Father, to be strong and fruitful trees. Fruit that people could taste and see that the Lord God is good. Father, I can't stop saying I love you. I love you, my Father. I love you with every fiber of energy that you made me of. I love you and I honor you. Bless your people, their comings and their goings, Lord. Give them peace. Give them courage to overcome. To live for you and to honor you in all that they say, all that they do, Lord. Let them know, Father, that the past has been forgiven and now they live in the newness of Christ. We love you, we bless you, and we thank you for Turning Point Fellowship. I thank you for every family, for every husband, every wife, every child is here, for every cousin, for every nephew, for every friend, for every co-worker, Lord. I pray that the gospel has touched their hearts, not tickled their ears, but that they heard the uncompromised word of God today, and they'll do something about it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand. Hug on somebody before you leave. If you don't know their names, introduce yourself to them. You may know their face, but you may not know their names. Tell them your name, who you are. Amen. I'm watching who's hugging and who's. <laughs>